Stay calm in the ever-changing forces, polarizing forces sometimes that come our way. Consistently coming to this place that's unchanging, consistently coming back to that true self. And using this practice as a way to get there, knowing that the physical postures are not the end all and the be all. They are a way to shake up the body, to wake it up, to shake out the soreness, to strengthen, and ultimately so that we can come back to that state of meditation, that state of bliss, so that we can respond accordingly when there are polarizing forces which there always are, externally and internally. Well, maybe I'm speaking for myself when I say that. And so I invite you today as we practice to set that intention or ask that question, how do I center amongst the polarizing forces externally or internally. We come to that comfortable seated position, feeling the spine is neutral, the shoulders are relaxed, the palms are open, the head is floating on top of the neck. The lower body is grounding down and the upper body is floating. Polarized forces working together to create that centering. Closing the eyes. And then if you will, inhaling for home. Removing the glasses, anything else in front of the eyes, preparing for the eye movements. Pretending that there is a big clock face in front of you and bringing the eyes up to 12. And then going in circles to one, two, going slowly with control. Noticing where the eyes want to skip over. Taking an inventory of where there's tension, 
Is the breath allowed to flow freely here? Are the shoulders tensing up, trying to do the work? And once the eyes get to the top of the vision, centering the gaze and closing the eyes. And opening the eyes once again and bring the eyes in a counterclockwise direction, 12, 11, 10. Noticing if this side is different, is it easier, less resistance, the same, allowing the head to be still, the eyes to be open. And when the eyes reach the top of the vision, centering the gaze, closing the eyes. Taking the hands, rubbing them briskly together, creating heat. And once again, once that heat has been created, cupping the eyes with the hands, allowing the prana, that life force, to seep in through the eyes, through the eye socket, through the optic nerve to the brain. Feeling that life force. Noticing how in stillness so much is happening still. How much work the body is doing. Just as we even sit here. Releasing the hands to the thighs. And then bring the right ear towards the right shoulder, taking the right hand, gently placing it on top of the head by the right ear, taking the left arm, extending it out towards the left and extending the fingertips. Playing with the height of that left arm, noticing for you what allows for the stretch that you need this morning. Continuing to release the shoulders down. Exhaling to center and inhale. Bring the left ear to the left shoulder, taking the left hand above the left ear and extending the right fingertips towards the right. Breathing here, playing with the height of the arm. Playing with the position of the head for me is different if my neck is a little forward than if it's a little bit back. Exhaling, releasing, shaking out the hands. And then bringing the chin towards the chest, clasping the hands together and bringing the hands to the crown of the skull, keeping the elbows wide here. And again, being careful here as this is a very precious part of our body that we want to take care of, be gentle with, and releasing the hands. And then if it's okay to gently start to bring the head slowly back, only going far as it's okay for your neck. Stretching up. Here. Excellent. And coming back to center. Exhaling, bring the hands to heart center. Inhaling, bring the arms up alongside the ears. And exhale, bring the hands down to heart center. We'll do that movement. We're gonna add one more with some breath retention. So exhale here. Inhale, arms come up towards the ears. Retain the breath as we bring the arms down to shoulder height, pressing the hands away from each other. Exhale here, taking two more breaths. Inhale and exhale, hands come to heart center, shaking out, the, shaking out the hands again, shaking out the neck, rolling it from side to side, doing a couple half moons as we come into tabletop, that hands and knees position here. Warming up the body, exhaling, rounding the spine, 
inhaling, extending, feeling the sensation from the bottom of the spine through the crown of the head. Using the breath, how you hop fast or slow, what those movements look like. Listening to the body, does the hips need to move from side to side? Does the neck need to roll? This is always a good indicator for me of where I need some, some stretching here. Back to the center, we'll come into a gentle flow here. So exhaling to center, inhaling, coming down to baby cobra. Inhaling center, exhaling child pose. So inhaling center, exhaling baby cobra. Inhaling center, exhaling child pose. Getting used to that flow. Getting the heartbeat up just a little bit. And then coming back to center. And sitting on the heels just for a moment, facing the camera, I wanted to just share one thing with you about lunges. So um, I, a little bit of an embarrassing, but true story is that there was a moment when I stopped going to yoga classes because I was frustrated that I couldn't bring my foot through in downward facing dog. And this I see when we're doing lunges, when we're coming from downward facing dog, bringing the foot through. So I wanted to show you various ways that you can do this to stay safe and also that might work for your body. So when we're in downward facing dog, that you can see me, the foot comes up. And as you can see, my foot does not come all the way through. So I'm gonna stop here, take my foot and bring it through. That's one way. Another way is to take the foot, bring it to the outside of the foot first, and then step the foot in, if that feels safer. And then the third way is to come up from downward facing dog, come down to tabletop, and step the foot forward. There's no such thing in yoga to do something that will, the most important thing is to keep your body safe for you. So experimenting with those different ways as we start our practices today. So coming back into that tabletop position. Thank you for indulging me. Pressing the palms into the floor and then curling the toes under and coming up to downward facing dog. Extending the left leg up behind you. And let's try this. Looking forward and bringing the foot through however you wish to experiment this morning. Taking your time to get there. Transitioning slowly. Letting that back knee come to the floor. Mm -hmm. And then bringing the fingertips to the floor to allow for extension in the neck. Yes, beautiful there. Making sure that the knee is over the ankle. Taking a few breaths here. And then stepping back into tabletop and then downward facing dog. And lowering down, knees, chest, chin to the floor. Baby cobra as you come up. And exhale back into downward facing dog. 
bringing the gaze forward and stepping the left foot through the hands or the opposite foot that we just did. Coming slowly into it. I love watching these slow movements here, transitioning, getting into the pose, coming up onto the fingertips, making sure that the knee is in line with the ankle, releasing the shoulders down, the head is in line with the spine. Curling the toes under and the back foot, stepping forward to meet the front into Uttanasana, forward fold. Releasing the head down, shaking the head yes, shaking the head no. Inhaling, bringing the hands just above the knees into a flat back. Inhaling, retaining the inhale and exhale forward fold. Bringing the hands back up to the knees into a flat back. Then walking the hands up. So now bringing them to the crease of the hips and then all the way up until you're standing up and then allowing the arms to come up alongside the ears and exhaling, hands come to the heart center. Folding forward here, exhaling, fingertips come to the floor. Stepping the right leg back, low lunge. Knee can stay lifted or it can come to the floor. Remembering that this practice here is for you. And so it's not even about what's the best in the world. It's about what is going to serve me in this moment right now. Lifting the hands up if you wish, bringing them to the thigh or up into Anjaneyasana, all the way up alongside the ears. Taking a breath here, again, feeling the polarizing forces here. It's the grounding in the lower body and the freedom in that upper body, and then releasing the hands down to the front foot, knowing that you can always come out of the pose when you need to, stepping back into a downward facing dog. Bringing the shoulders over the hips for a plank, if you would like, lowering the knees to the floor, if this is too much, again, what is going to serve you today, and then lowering down into either chaturanga or knees, chest, chin, and coming up into low cobra or upward facing dog. And then again, pushing back up into downward facing dog. Let's take a pause here. Take a few breaths, noticing the alignment, making sure that the fingers are spread wide. The shoulder blades are reaching towards each other and the elbows are coming in just a little bit. Practicing your way as we bring the right foot forward. and choosing a hand position here. Noticing if this side wants something different than the other side and honoring that. Not forgetting to breathe, noticing where the tension is here as there starts to be some sensation perhaps. And then releasing the hands to the front foot, stepping forward into Uttanasana, forward fold. Resting the torso on the knees and sitting back into chair pose, your version today. The only thing I ask is that the knees stay apart here. Shifting back into the heels, Releasing the muscles of the jaw, the shoulders, and then exhaling forward fold. And please come up in whichever way the body is asking here.
and exhale, hands to heart center. So you all are an expert at tree pose, I hear, having done it so many days in a row. So we're gonna have our, our tree grow roots today. If again, you'd like to step off the bat or have a wall close by, you can certainly have that here. So we're gonna do two poses and you are welcome to do one at a time, or if you would like to try to do it in a flow, you're welcome to do that too. So start by shifting the weight to the right foot here. And then take the left knee and align it with the right. And then take hold of the left foot, if that's possible here. Take the right arm and bring it alongside the ear. Beautiful. If you know this pose, or if you would like to, you could press the hand into the foot, and then the, the foot comes back. Or stay here, whatever is going to serve you. From here, very slowly with control, let go of the foot, and then bring it into tree pose, knowing that you can come out anytime knowing that your trees may sway in the breeze as we grow. And then releasing the hands, releasing the feet, shaking it out. And then shifting to the left foot. So bringing the awareness into the left foot, lifting the right toe off the floor, bending the right knee, taking hold of the foot, bringing it in line with the left knee. And then bring the opposite arm up. And then you could press the foot into the hand as the lifted foot comes back or stay here. And then transitioning into our tree pose, very slowly letting go of the standing foot and coming into your version of tree. Playing here, laughing if you fall, Continuing to press the foot into the leg and the leg into the foot, just making sure that that foot isn't on the knee joint. And hands can come to heart center. They can come up. You could try closing the eyes. And then releasing the foot and releasing the hand, shaking out the feet. Thank you for indulging me there. Bring the feet as wide as the mat coming into a wide-legged squat. So bring the hands to heart center, inhaling, and then exhaling, lowering all the way down. <clears throat> For some of us, our, um, our heels may lift up. You might wanna put a blanket underneath the buttocks or the heels if it's uncomfortable for you here. Closing the eyes. And then releasing one hand to the mat, coming all the way down and coming into Shavasana corpse pose. Letting the body absorb the standing poses. And as a reminder, my suggestions, my indications are suggestions following what your body needs. If there is sharp shooting pain, that is a clear indication to back off. If there is a dull aching in some muscles, like the muscle is sore, that is safe. And then just know for yourself, is it when do I need to back off here? 
If there's swelling, vertigo, that is also a sign to back off of a pose. Bring the feet to the floor, bending the knees. We'll come into a dynamic bridge pose. So inhaling, lifting the lower, mid, and upper back. We'll start with that. And then releasing the upper, mid, and lower back. Hands are going to press into the floor. And then we're going to use the hands. So lifting the mid upper back as the hands come overhead, lowering the upper mid and lower back as the hands come down. Doing a few rounds of that. And then pause when you come to the floor. your next round and pressing the hands into the floor will come into a static pose. So lifting the buttocks off the floor, perhaps interlacing the fingers and bringing the elbows close together or maybe the hands come to the lower back. <clears throat> or if you have a practice of wheel and only if it's safe and you have a practice and you'd like to come to that, that is also an option here. And then slowly releasing down. Shaking, bringing the knees from side to side. And then rolling onto the abdomen. Preparing for bow pose, Dhanurasana. Bring the hands by the side, bending the knees and taking hold of both feet or one foot or the ankles, pressing the feet into the hands and lifting the lower body up. And then the upper body. Beautiful. You could rock back and forth. Careful here that the feet don't splay out, that the knees don't splay out past the hips. And of course, coming down whenever the body is asking. And then slowly letting go of the feet, lowering the knees, shins and tops of the feet to the floor and turning one cheek and then the other cheek. Pressing the palms into the floor, coming into hands and knees. Neutralizing the spine here by exhaling, rounding, and inhaling, extending. And then coming into neutral. Coming back to sit on your heels and then coming to sit on the hips with the legs in front of you, coming into Dandasana or staff pose. Pressing the hands into the floor here, using a cushion if you know that you have tight hamstrings so you can have a little bit more of a pelvic twist, tilt, not twist, tilt, or taking a blanket and sitting on the edge of that. And here, let's play with bending the knees first. 
and allowing the torso to rest on the belly. And then here I have my hands just underneath my knees. And I am going to very slowly inch my feet forward, still allowing my torso to be connected to my thighs. And when I do that, I can stop about here before I can release down without my arms being the ones that are pulling me down. So coming down as far as the body will allow you to, allowing the impetus to come from the lower back, from the breath, as opposed to the arms pulling you down. Allowing the elbows to bend, the knees to bend, Inhaling the arms alongside the ears and releasing all the way up, hinging forward up the hips, inhaling, and then exhaling to hands down to heart center. Gorgeous. So coming into that beginning dolphin pose, we'll come into again. Again, if you have high blood pressure or head or neck injuries, I'm going to ask <clears throat> that you put your legs either up a wall or up on a couch and rest in that position. To start with dolphin, coming into a tabletop position first. And then bringing the elbows to the floor and clasping the hands and bringing the crown of the head to the floor. And then lift the toes, tucking the toes under, lifting the knees up. And then stopping there, noticing, and then you could press the forearms into the floor and lift the head up. Bringing the head over the arms and coming back. Doing that a couple of times, always coming out when is necessary for you. Then you could release the head down, walk the feet in towards the hips. This is the beginnings of headstand if you wanna try this. Otherwise, rest in child's pose. You could bring the legs up a wall and then bend the knees, perhaps lifting one foot at a time. And if both knees come or both feet come up and staying there in that tuck position, backing off again, if there's head or neck, if you begin to get dizzy, stopping there. Awesome. Slowly coming out wherever you are and resting in child's pose. Pressing the palms into the floor, coming into hero's pose, and we'll come into um, either shoulder stand. Please do make sure that if you have, if you're getting some compression in the neck or head, that you place a blanket underneath the shoulder blades. Um, if you'd like to put your legs up a wall, but you don't have wall space because <laughs> you live in San Francisco or New York, um, you could, this is my wall. Yeah. It's just a coat that I could put my legs up as well. If you have a block, you could place that underneath the sacrum and then allow the legs to come up. So lots of options here. Please be safe for yourself. Play within the capabilities of your body this morning knowing that what you choose to do for yourself is what is going to serve you today.
And when you're in the pose, finding some stillness here. You may want to experiment with some leg movements. You could bring the feet wide apart and then the bottoms of the feet together into like a butterfly. Typically, we hold these pose for about three minutes. You could bring one leg over and then the other leg into what we call a capata. You could try and experiment with unsupported shoulder stance. So bringing one hand down to the mat, perhaps the other one comes to the thigh, and then switching. And then find a place of stillness. Thing for another 30 seconds. And then releasing one hand to the mat and then the other. <clears throat> Slowly coming down, pausing when the legs are on the floor. I'm sorry, when the hips are on the floor. And when the hips reach the floor, making a choice to either keep the legs straight or bend the knees. So we come all the way down into Shavasana. Shaking up the legs. Moving the feet from side to side. And then coming into the counter pose, Matsyasana fish pose, which is the classic <clears throat> often we do, or Supta Vajrasana. You could also have a supported fish by placing a blanket underneath the shoulder blades. Bring the head in towards the chest and releasing the head down. If you were in Sutta Vajrasana, coming into child's pose. And if you were in Matsyasana, resting here in Javasana, <clears throat> take bending the knees, hugging them into the chest, rocking from side to side. And then rocking back and forth like you're on a swing or a little kid and rocking yourself right into a seated position. Smiling as you do this, you might as well have a little fun. And then placing the feet on the floor, bending the knees, coming into boat pose. So starting here, you could keep the hands underneath the thighs or you could release them here. My shoulder blades and chest stay open as I lift my feet off the floor. I haven't lost the integrity of the openness of my chest here. You could begin to straighten the legs as long as the chest continues to stay open. Know that the more you extend your legs, the harder, the more intense it will be in the abdomen. That's where we're bringing the awareness here. Bending the knees 
and straightening the legs. Staying here if you wish and doing a little flutter kick. Beautiful. And then lowering both halves of the body, just hovering over the floor as much as you can. Come down and then come up, bending the knees, crossing the ankles, pressing the palms into the floor. See if you can lift yourself up a little bit. Levitation 101. And then straightening the knees, bending the knees, releasing to the floor, shaking out the legs. Thank you for indulging in my play a little bit there. Taking the hands, placing them behind the hips, fingertips can be facing the hips or can be away as we come up into reverse tabletop. Head can come back if it's safe. And then releasing down. Beautiful, hugging the knees into the chest. Releasing here, straightening out the legs, coming into Dandasana, staff pose, preparing for Ardha Matsyandrasana, our twist. So perhaps sitting on something once again. Taking the right knee and hugging it into the chest and allowing that for more length in the spine as we place it over the left thigh. Taking the left hand, hugging the bent knee, taking the right arm and placing it on the floor by the small of the back. Inhaling, extending, and then exhaling, rotating over to the right. First the belly, then the chest, then the shoulders, then the head. Continuing to lengthen as you inhale and then twist as you exhale. Taking one more inhale and then exhale. First the head, then the chest, then the torso. And releasing the legs, shaking them out. And then tugging the left knee in towards the chest, lengthening the spine placing it over the right thigh and taking the left hand, placing it on the floor by the small of the back, inhaling, lengthening one more time, and then exhaling, twisting first the abdomen, then the chest, then the shoulders, and then the head, and then the neck. Taking one more breath. Exhaling slowly, one piece at a time. Unhinging. And doing a counter twist to the other side if that's comfortable for you. And releasing the feet. Preparing for yoga mudra, the yogic seal. So either coming into a cross-legged position or coming to Kira's pose, sitting on the heels. You may want to place a blanket or a block in front of you if you know that your head doesn't come all the way to the floor. Taking hold of one wrist behind the back. Inhaling and then exhaling, hinging forward at the hips and coming all the way down.
pinching at the hips, inhaling as you come up, using the entire length of the inhale to come up. And then once you come up, exhaling, releasing the hands to the thighs. And keeping the same sense of peace and calm as we come into yoga nidra, the yogic sleep. It's amazing to me how much happens, <clears throat> as I keep saying, I don't know why in this, how much the body is doing without us having to do much and how important it is for us to be in these moments of stillness. Closing the eyes, if that's comfortable for you or a soft gaze. As we tighten the entire body by pointing the toes, making fists with the hands, scrunching up the shoulders up towards the neck, scrunching all the muscles of the face in towards the nose, squeezing all the pieces of the body in towards the torso, inhaling and exhaling release. Splaying out the fingers, lifting the arms up, splaying out the feet, bring them wide apart opening the eyes, opening the mouth, inhaling, lifting the, all parts of the body off the floor that you can, and exhaling, release. Doing any other small movements that will help you stay completely still for the next few moments. feeling that all parts of the body are relaxed, including the feet, the shins, the knees, the thighs, the pelvis, the belly, the chest, the shoulders, releasing the buttocks, the lower back, the upper back, relaxing the fingers, the hands, the lower arms, the elbows, the upper arms, the shoulders, the neck, the head, and the muscles of the face, including the jaw and the temples. Bringing the awareness to the breath. Noticing that as the body becomes calm, the breath relaxes. Noticing the rise and fall of the belly. And if there's any spaces between the exhale and the inhale. Then bringing the awareness into the mind. Noticing the thoughts like clouds in the sky going by one by one by one without attaching to it. And then soon enough, there's nothing but blue sky, nothing but emptiness. 
and it is here where the true self emerges, that unchanging force amidst whatever is going on inside, outside, and taking a few moments to rest in this place of the true self. wiggling the fingers and the toes. By deepening the breath. Slowly rolling over onto one side. And gradually pushing yourself up into a seated position. Preparing for the breath, the pranayama practices. Soft gaze here, moving slowly, keeping that same sense of peace. Coming into that deer of awesome, that deep three-part breath, perhaps placing a hand on the belly so that you can feel the inhale and the exhale as it comes from the belly chest and the heart and exhaling from the heart, the chest and the belly. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. If this is new for you, making sure to be aware of if there's any dizziness returning to the normal breath. Returning the hands to the thighs. We'll come into a round of Kapalabhati skull shining breath, which I believe you learned early in the week. If you have this practice, you may begin. I'll do a little slower and give some instruction for those who would like it. Inhaling and exhaling completely. Start here. Bringing the finger out in front of the mouth, and we're just going to say ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. And when you do that, you can feel the belly. Ha, 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 ha. Exhale. We're going to do that same motion through the nose. Good. And then exhale completely. 
So we'll come into a round just like that. You may leave the finger there if it's more comfortable bringing them to the thigh. So exhale completely. Inhale partially and we'll begin. Exhale completely, releasing the hands to the thighs, returning the breath to normal, soaking that in for a moment. And then we'll come into one or two rounds of Nadi Sudhi. So releasing the finger, the pinky and the thumb, exhaling and then inhaling through the left nostril, releasing the right nostril, exhaling through the right, inhaling through the right, exhaling through the left, inhaling through the left, and repeat, going at your own pace. And after the next exhale through the right nostril, returning the hands to the thighs and preparing for a brief meditation here. Perhaps focusing on the breath or a chant such as Om Shanti or a personal practice that you bring with you today. Thank you.